This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Wolf Blitzer in Washington. Uh, we're following the breaking news. Chicago officials, they are about to release dash cam video of a white police officer shooting and killing an African-American teenager. That officer has now been charged with first degree murder. We're back with our experts to discuss what's going on. Tom Fuentes, you're a former FBI assistant director, clearly the mayor of Chicago, the police superintendent of Chicago. They're very worried that once people see this video of this white police officer shooting and killing a 17-year-old teenager, as that teenager lay on the ground, people will react potentially violently. They're calling for calm. Right. People familiar with the investigation have told me that the video is really bad against this officer, that it shows that Laquan McDonald goes to the ground after having been shot, no longer poses the threat of any kind. There's a pause in the shooting. Then the officer resumes shooting and, and basically empties a magazine into his body. And they're just saying that it was clear to the officers involved in this investigation that, that he was going to be charged. The officer would be charged with something, and this is what they expected. But now they feel that the video is going to be so difficult to watch and so uh, against the officer that they are expecting disturbance, if not protest, if not violence. You heard Mayor decided. Emanuel call on city leaders, the police superintendent Gary McCarthy call on city leaders for a calm. Don Lemon, uh, your thoughts on what's going on and potentially what's going to happen in Chicago? Um, well, Wolf, as someone who worked there, I lived in Chicago for three years. I could tell you stories, my own stories about the Chicago Police Department, but I won't. I will, I, but I, what I will tell our audience and the world who's watching is that this problem in Chicago with police officers is much bigger than most people know. And this is awful that it happened to this young man. It should not have happened. But all you have to do is go on the Internet and look up Chicago beating and you'll see video after video of Chicago police who were involved in, in such instances, even a, a former police officer who uh, tried to cover up beating a 125-year-old female bartender a few when I worked there, John Burge was a big story, who was a, a, a former uh, Chicago police detective who it, tried to, who beat up at least 200 men or more, trying to go hearse confessions out of them, most of those men, uh, black and Latino young men. So this is a problem that is systemic. The Chicago Police Department, the mayor, they have known about this forever. Um, the, Rahm Emanuel is, is no stranger to what happens in Chicago. He's a native of Chicago. He was there. He was in law, uh, a, a law um, uh, a lawmaker when I was there, and I knew him very well. Everyone knows the problem in Chicago when it comes to the police department. This is a, this is, I just got a note from a very well-respected member of the community who lives in Hyde Park, who knows Barack Obama and who is his neighbor, and says, Don, in Chicago, we are close to having a race war, okay? She says, lack of jobs make young men go into drug-selling business. With that comes guns and turf battles. Street war is what we have in a dysfunctional law enforcement system that historically allowed officers to get away with murder contributes greatly to the problem. The Chicago police brag about being the baddest gang on the street. What does that say about the rule of law? She has a very good point. And again, having worked there for a number of years, I witnessed that and the outrageousness of the, of the, of the uh, Chicago Police Department and how such things went unfettered and no, there was no accountability for such a long time. Even the officer that I mentioned, John Burge, started beating people in the 1970s, did not go to prison for it until 2011, and then is now out of prison, only got four and a half years. So it is a huge problem in Chicago. We all pray for peace, but um, Cornell Brooks is right. This is a situation that needs to be addressed and the world needs to know about it. Sonny Hostin, uh, in charging the officer Van Dyke uh, with first degree murder, uh, did the prosecutor evaluate the, the potential for, for violence on the streets, if you will. In other words, if it would have been a second-degree murder charge or negligent homicide, something along those lines, potentially the anger could have been much more intense given the graphic nature of the dash cam video. Well, prosecutors aren't supposed to take that into consideration, Wolf. I mean, prosecutors are seeking justice. They're seeking the truth. They're seeking uh, to, to, to really find out what happened. So you don't really consider that when you're, you're filing charges. What I do find very uh, discouraging and disheartening is that this investigation took over 10 months. Um, you know, this incident happened October 20 of 2014, and this officer was still on the payroll uh, up until a few days ago. And so I think when you're talking about the lack of transparency with the police department and, quite frankly, with the state's attorney's office as well, that 
uh, is very problematic, I am certain, for the community. I've spoken to many people in the community today, and that seems to be an overriding concern. Why did it take so long, one, for any action to be taken, two, for the video to be released, and, and, and three, you know, why are we sort of now covering this this uh, this incident? And, and so I think that is very problematic. You know, we he we're hearing so much from, from the mayor and, and the police commissioner, but where were they months and months and months ago? Quite frankly, in my experience as a prosecutor, if this video is as graphic as they are saying it is, if it shows that this officer killed a, a teenager uh, in, in a premeditated, non-justified way, I don't understand with that kind of evidence why it would take this long to bring charges. Joey Jackson, uh, Laquan McDonald's uh, family uh, did not actually want the video to be released because it is so graphic and disturbing. A freelance journalist filed a Freedom of Information Act uh, request in order to get the video released. That's why authorities are about to release this video right now. Normally, this video presumably would be released during the actual court case. Is that right? It would be, but, you know, here's going to be a very big issue because the videotape will speak for itself. And let's just get down to the legalities of what I think the prosecutors are going to move forward with. Number one, they're going to look for the immediacy of the threat. It'll be shown on the video. Was there an immediate threat? In the event that there was, the officer has every right to discharge the firearm. The problem is those who have viewed it said... There does not appear to be any immediacy of the threat. In fact, the suspect appears to be moving away. That's a problem. Wolf. Number two, when analyzing the videotape, it's going to show. Was the force used by the officer, was it proportionate to any threat posed? That is significant because it goes to the issue of number three, which is reasonableness. And remember, it's not the officer himself and whether he acted reasonably. It's would an officer, a reasonable officer in his position. Well, we can answer that question because we know that there are eight other officers that are there, or eight in total, and he's the only one firing. And then briefly, Wolf, on the issue of what it will show in terms of timing, it's the understanding that this officer fired within 30 seconds of arriving at the scene, within six seconds of exiting his car, fired for 15 seconds, and 13 of those seconds, it's believed that the video will show, but 13 of those seconds, you know, the, the deceased is on the ground. And so now you have to say, well, what was the immediacy of the threat? Was there any justification? And obviously the prosecutor says no, hence the first degree murder charge, and hence the potential for that officer to spend the rest of his life in jail. All right, guys, stand by uh, because we're told that video is about to be released. Let's take another quick break. Uh, we'll take a look at the video when we come back. This is CNN Breaking News. We're following the breaking news. Chicago officials, they have now just released the actual video of a police officer, a white police officer, shooting and killing an African-American teenager. The police officer today has been charged with first-degree murder. Officials in Chicago, the mayor, the police superintendent, they were just at a news conference urging calm on the streets of Chicago as a result of this video, which uh, it, we're about to show you, which our viewers here in the United States, indeed around the world, we'll see uh, Cornell William Brooks is with us, the president and CEO of the NAACP. Clearly, Cornell, you believe, as Don Lemon just suggested, this is a big problem in Chicago, not just a, a, an isolated incident. It's part of a bigger problem in Chicago. But is it a part of a bigger problem in other cities around the United States as well? Uh, absolutely. So uh, the challenge in Chicago, this horrific uh, tragedy in Chicago, is emblematic of a larger issue. That is to say, when a, a young African-American man is 21 times more likely to lose his life at the hands of the police than his white counterpart. That's true across the country. When we think about the fact that we have, as a country, uh, downloaded into our collective memory uh, the video, if you will, of Walter Scott, Tamir Rice, and Mr. McDonald. And so we have literally playing in our consciousness as a country uh, unarmed African-American men, and in, one, in, this, uh, in the case of Tamir Rice, a child, uh, uh, killed on videotape. Uh, and so we have an empirical basis for apprehension about uh, the conduct of police departments all across the country. Uh, we, I just came back from Minneapolis uh, where we uh, saw Mr. Uh, Jamar Clark uh, uh, lose his life. Or we, we are responding to that tragedy. The point being here is this warrior-style 
of policing as opposed to a guardian mode of policing uh, is the challenge. And the fact of the matter is we cannot isolate this to one city. We can't blame it on one police department. We have to respond with a sense of urgency. Think about it this way. Most of the police department in Chicago he has been called up and put out on the street, if you will. Uh, we see this as being on, on the precipice of, an, of, a, of a citywide emergency. What if we were to treat the, the instances of police misconduct as an ongoing emergency and respond with that sense of urgency? Where the city of Chicago in 10 years has spent half a billion dollars in legal settlements. This is a problem, but Chicago is not the only city. New York has, has, these, has these challenges. Los Angeles has these challenge, challenges. Cities in the Midwest and the Deep South. The point being here is we've got to respond as a country to a criminal justice so crisis. So is the immediate crisis, the fear in Chicago, and you heard it from the mayor, you heard it from the police superintendent, that when people see the video, uh, and they've just released the video, they'll be angry, there'll be not only demonstrations, but there could be violence. How do you stop that? What do, you, what do the mayor, the leaders in Chicago need to do? Well, we can't treat this as a public relations problem to be managed, but a criminal justice challenge to be addressed. The point being is if we can marshal and mobilize nearly the entire Chicago police, afo police force to prevent potential violence, what about marshalling the entire police force prior to this calamity, prior to this tragedy, by getting them to reform uh, systemically from top to bottom? Uh, the superintendent has talked about this, but we certainly need a civilian review board with teeth in Chicago. We need them elsewhere. Uh, certainly these body cameras are helpful, but fundamentally, fundamentally we get, back, we get back to this again and again. We've got to change the culture of policing. Stand by, guys. Uh, we're told, by the way, uh, by a spokesman for the Chicago police that their website has crashed because so many people are now trying to download that video. Stand by. Much more on the breaking news right after this. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.